Um, there's so much that happened this weekend. Uh, we could talk about, of course, the FBI investigation, the debate over uh, how wide that FBI investigation is going to be, Democrats complaining, the president saying you do whatever you want to do, of course, Kanye wearing a Make America Great Again cap on Saturday Night Live, and actually my favorite moment of the weekend, it, it, I kind of got moved. You know I'm a romantic <laughs> guy. Donald Trump saying... We fell in love. <laughs> not yeah. of Kanye, yeah. not of Kanye, but of Kim Jong Un. Of course, please, everybody, this morning at, at 6.01 a.m., please just try to imagine what would have happened if Barack Hussein Obama had right. said the same thing while President That's, of the United States. But yeah. I digress. Yeah. I digress. Talk about what happened, first of all, on Friday after we went off the air. Flake and Coons, so they make a deal. And I'm curious. Do you see this as sort of like, uh, you know, after <clears throat> World War II began, uh, they talked about a phony war. Is this a phony peace that Democrats and Republicans uh, find themselves in, or, or is there a, a positive uh, uh, coming out of it? Well, uh, there's a couple things. I mean, I think most people are probably familiar with what happened. In some sense, you had Jeff Flake who came out in the morning and said that he was going to be voting for Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, and then over the course of that morning in the Judiciary Committee uh, and being confronted in that elevator by two victims of sexual assault, uh, came back and cut, what, talked to pr right. principally to Chris Coons and then to his other colleagues. And they ended up reaching this accommodation to give a week of supplemental investigation by the FBI. That, that I think, you know, it, we're now, we've already moved way past that in that moment I think there's no doubt that there were a lot of people on both sides of the aisle uh, in fact who are a little queasy about the notion of fast-tracking uh, the Kavanaugh nomination having a vote today a final vote today or Monday or Tuesday uh, a huge test vote over the weekend given the emotions and the drama of Thursday's hearing to kind of well, then and John you notice everybody that was screaming on Thursday saw, even Lindsey Graham was speaking using an inside voice right. and smiling yeah. and everybody it seemed overnight had changed, at least in their temperament. Well, there was a lot, I mean, I think a lot of people were emotionally wrung out, uh, but even then, that committee hearing, there was an awful lot of, uh, I thought, I felt bitterness on both sides, even though their voices were lower, there was a lot of, still a lot of acrimony on the Democratic side and on the Republican side, and people still trying to reckon with what had happened the previous day, and a lot of people who felt, and, and yeah, I think, uh, Senator Flake eventually kind of crystallized this notion that uh, something that we'd been saying on this show and many people have been saying for weeks, which is, you know, they're, they're, these are irreconcilable versions of events and that due process demanded uh, at least at least another week and at least uh, to look into some of these accusations that have been brought against Judge Kavanaugh for the sake of Judge Kavanaugh as well as the sake of the accuser. So, you know, you got this moment pause. I think, you know, we're now going to have a big debate, I think, on an hourly basis going forward over what the scope of that uh, investigation is going to be. Uh, Democrats are already unhappy with it. They think it's too limited. Uh, there, you have Dianne Feinstein de demanding that the White House put forward the uh, the parameters of the investigation. What has the FBI ex exactly been asked to uh, to investigate? You've had representations right. of that made in the press, sometimes in public. Lindsey Graham on television yesterday. Uh, I do think that that's going to be an acrimonious debate. But let me just I'll say this, and I and I, I whether it's. I don't, there's, this is going to be the debate. Is this a fig leaf that's being created here, or is this a genuine fact-finding uh, inquiry? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the biggest problem with it, as your friend over the weekend, I was with, I was with your friend Joyce Vance uh, down at the Austin, in Austin at the Tribune Festival, and she made the important point that structurally, when, you, when the FBI produces a piece of, does an investigation like this, it has a client. There's a client for the work product. Right. And the client in this case is Don McGahn at the White House, the White House Counsel. It is also the case that the White House and the White House Counsel, Don McGahn, are the chief advocates on the part of Judge Kavanaugh. So they're both the clients right. for the work product and, and the, 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 the main sponsors of the, of, the, of the nomination. And so therefore you have an inherent kind of conflict in, built into this process. And well, I think that well, well, conflict well, is going to yeah. be played out and teased out over the days to come. Well, I mean, everybody knew, Frank, that was the case from the very beginning. Everybody knew that was going to be the case because it's the White House that orders it up. Right now, you have a lot of complaints coming in that this is only a week, which, of course, I think is laughable because everybody was saying, well, let's just get a week. So Democrats got a week, and now people are rubbing you know, their hands together going, oh, my God, a week is not enough. This is a sham. Other people are suggesting that the scope be expanded. I don't know how far you expand a scope. 
uh, when you only have a week to investigate. Uh, but that, those were the parameters that were agreed to, and it seems to me that if you just take the, the Dr. Ford incident that she alleges happens, and you take the five witnesses that were there, and then you take the Yale incident and try to get the five, six, seven, eight uh, 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 people who were there, I don't know, does the FBI have more time to do a good job uh, expanding beyond that scope? I mean, we could try to track down everybody over the next seven days, but it seems to me that the time limit and the accusations in front of the committee required that they did limit the scope and do a good job just on these two incidents. Am I wrong? <laughs> So it's not the time limit. It's not the time limit that's troubling the, me the most, Joe. The FBI is capable of amazing things because of the resources they can surge in a limited amount of time. The thing that's really bothering me, two things really, is the incredible constraints that are being put on the FBI by the White House. We're making certain assumptions here this morning, and the assumptions are wrong. The assumption that the FBI is going to have free reign within what they've been tasked to do. So look at Ramirez, and so you make an assumption. Oh, you're going to do. All, you're going to interview all of the the uh, the witnesses to the Ramirez incident. You're going to run down right. every name she provides you. You're going to go to Yale, and you're going to find people who are living in the dorm at the time. That's not happening. The FBI is not only dictating who you can interview but also what investigative steps you can take within that allegation. So, for example, this morning, we still don't have any word that Dr. Ford is even on the list of people to be interviewed. In fact, we're hearing from sources it's the opposite, that her statement is always uh, is already on record. We don't need to hear from her again. That's a terrible mistake well, to be made, can, and I want can, the can public I, can to I understand. Can I stop you right there, Frank? This is, can, can, go, stop. Yeah. Can, can I ask you, just for a second, Frank, uh, do you have inside information that the rest of us don't have, or is this more of a question of transparency? We need the White House to be more transparent. We need uh, Don McGahn to be more transparent because we really don't know exactly what the parameters uh, are right now. I, I, the only thing I saw quoted overnight was a senior, uh, a senior federal official uh, talking about the limits. You've got people inside the White House saying that they don't have those constraints. Do you have information that it is that limited? Joe, I am here sitting here this morning telling you they are severely limited and I know they are, and I know there's frustration, and I know that the Bureau is going to have to come back for every request that they want to add to a very, very short list. The FBI has been handcuffed, and the clock is ticking on this artificial one-week deadline. Now, is that, Frank, is that based on your, your sourcing? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Donnie, if, in fact, the FBI has been handcuffed by Donald Trump's White House and by Don McGahn, well, at the end of the day, it doesn't buy them what they wanted to, it doesn't get them what they wanted to get uh, when they were all talking positively about a one-week extension and an FBI investigation, because then the story is just going to be about what the FBI was not allowed to do. Yeah, and if uh, Kavanaugh gets pushed through, we're going to be in the same place as had we not had an FBI investigation. And a place that long-term is, is concerning to me uh, from both It was interesting, over the weekend, my 15-year-old daughter was telling me that a bunch of her friends told her for the first time about assaults they had. And my 89-year-old mother was telling me stories that her friends had told her never before. And you're going <clears> to <throat> have half of this country or uh, the majority of women in this country uh, feeling so angry, so violated, because at this point going forward, why does a woman come forward? This is, uh, to me, so beyond politics. And if you just were listening to anybody talk this weekend, it was about women and how about how women feel and to me you're going to have a stained supreme court you are going to have women feeling almost worse than before the me too movement and how does that play out in november how does that play out going forward and also you know the supreme court was one of the last institutions that was not stained you know, we, we, we've seen what's happened with the Office of the Presidency. We've seen what's happened with the FBI. We've seen what happened with, with, the, uh, with the media. Every, everything is kind of like dumped on. And now, for an entire generation of women going forward, they will not be able to look at the Supreme Court the same way, particularly post that Kavanaugh performance, that as a man, I was embarrassed for him. It was, it was the ultimate display of, of white 
entitlement. And speaking of which, just one more point. As I talk to men over the weekend, I find that the higher you go on the income curve, the more men are like, why, you know, well, we all did this, we all did this in one form or another, still not getting it. Women are getting it, and I find the lower you go on the income curve, men are getting it. But this does not move us at all any forward as far as entitled men feeling what they can and can't get away from. I think the stakes are beyond politics. It goes way into where we stand as the genders. So, Elise, uh, Jordan, let me ask you uh, to follow up on what Donnie just said, because, you know, before, I, on Thursday and Friday, what I was hearing, everybody I talked to was talking about how they believed Dr. Ford and Kavanaugh was horrible and he should be, you know, driven out to sea and put on a tugboat and never be allowed to return to the continental United States again. I was surprised over the weekend uh, to actually talk to men and women. Uh, and who, it, it's, I haven't seen anything like this in quite a while. They would sit there and then they would question the veracity of Dr. Ford's story. And then seamlessly, we, they would start talking how, about how Brett Kavanaugh was a liar. And then they would start attacking Democrats. And then they'd start attacking Republicans. And I, you almost wanted to throw your, I, I couldn't figure out whether they were Republicans, whether they were Democrats, whether they wanted Kavanaugh to go through, whether they thought uh, Dr. Ford was a, quote, fabulous, which uh, I certainly, uh, nobody here would ever say she was. But there was just a general frustration that, you know what it reminded me of? The Duke lacrosse case, where there weren't, there were no good guys, good girls, bad guys, good girls, women, et cetera, et cetera. It was just everybody was negative about everything. Joe, I think you're honing in on an important part of this debate, which is facts versus feelings and how it's become so supercharged and 20% of America took time out from their day on Thursday to watch these hours and hours of searing testimony, just emotional and raw. I know that I cried uh, during both of the testimonies. And it was just one of those moments where everyone knows how they feel and they're thinking a lot about how they feel. And we just still are not sure what the facts are. And that's why I do think it is important that they have launched this one week investigation. It, it's a bipartisan agreement. The Democrats uh, forged this agreement with Senator Flake and Republicans are going along with it. And so to move the goalposts too dramatically seems unfair to immediately launch into discrediting the investigation that was a pinnacle of questioning for the Democrats during Judge Kavanaugh's testimony. And I agree. I, I think the Democrats are making mistake if they are every single day uh, picking apart the FBI investigation 12 hours, 24 hours into the investigation. I think what Dianne Feinstein did was certainly more than called for. Demand transparency, demand to know what the FBI can investigate, what they cannot investigate. Uh, if there are FBI agents, as Frank said, that believe that they're being uh, uh, handcuffed from, from being able to really figure out what happened, uh, that needs to be fixed, and it needs to be fixed right away. And that's something, hopefully, that people will, will figure out, uh, uh, we can figure out early this morning uh, as the week starts. So, um, Barbara, let, let me go to you. Um, I, and I, I want to touch on something that uh, Elise, uh, she, she talked about facts versus feelings. I think most of the people that we talk to, uh, as far as feelings go, uh, almost everybody I talked to had positive, quote, feelings about Dr. Ford. Uh, some people were offended by what Brett Kavanaugh said. Others were very moved by Brett Kavanaugh's opening statement. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.